everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman. Baseball is back, and so is Jim Sonis, a newly married man. What's happening, Jim? Obviously, I'm pretty great, Greg. It was nice to have a week to kind of rest up, recharge, see some family, and have a lot of fun. And uh, But I, I'm coming back here, and now everything's hitting the fan all at once. We got NASCAR race on Thursday night. We got baseball coming back Thursday, a full slate on Friday. So, you know, it was nice to, to rest up for a bit, but we are back in full swing. How you doing? I'm great, man. In fact, not only are we back in full swing with baseball here, opening day upon us, but it should be the beginning of all four major sports coming back. We have baseball, basketball a week later, then hockey, NASCAR and golf have already been there, and football on the horizon. Things are looking up. Let's hope they stay that way. Let's get to opening day Thursday. There's two baseball games to talk about. Yankees and Nats, oh, that's a big one. Max Scherzer taking on Garrett Cole here. And, well, you don't just like one of those pitchers. You like both. Let's start with Gary Cole, who is priced at $11,400 over on FanDuel. You want to pay up for a pitcher on Thursday. You know, with two of the best, why are we starting with Gary Cole? Yeah, I think to me it's a pretty easy case to make Cole the top starter of the night. And yeah, you know, you look at Clayton Kershaw's matchup, it's pretty intriguing. But the talent level in Cole and Scherzer is so good that I'm going to use them no matter what they're facing. I think the matchup here for Garrett Cole is a bit better than it may seem, given that the Nationals just won the whole thing last year. So maybe people could be scared off. But with Anthony Rendon being gone, this matchup or this lineup isn't as imposing as it would have been previously. Their active roster, according to Fangrass, actually has just a 97 WRC plus against righties based on last year's numbers. And Cole... He can take advantage of that. Last year, a 40% strikeout rate, 6% walk rate. Didn't allow a whole lot of hard contact. And I would expect that to continue this year once again. Now, you could say the one downside is that he's pitching on the road, but I'm not sure what effect that's going to have this year with no fans being in the stands. It'll certainly still have some effect because he is still traveling. But, well, the same effect as it would previously – I don't know, but I think that uh, with Garrett Cole being as good as he is, it seems like he is mostly ramped up, uh, which allows me to afford to, to you know justify paying 11-4 for him. I think that it just kind of makes sense. I think that if you're tearing out the pitchers for the Thursday night slate, Garrett Cole is by himself at the top, and then it's everyone else fighting for second place. And I think that if you're doing just one lineup, Garrett Cole would be the pitcher I'd use. Of course, everybody else is, is really just only three other pitchers. But Gary Cole is the top pitcher on the board. And you talked about how he seems ramped up here. And from everything you've read, everything you've looked at, he's ready to go 90 pitches or so. Or, or so. I don't imagine he'll go much more. I, if he can get six innings out of him, that would be, of course, ideal. Garrett Cole against the Nationals. Well, he's the top pitcher on the board for a reason. The Yankees gave him all that money for a reason. Let's take advantage. If you have one lineup, let's get him in there. But if you don't want to go with Garrett Cole, if you want to go into that second tier, you want to begin with Max Scherzer. He's a bit cheaper than Garrett Cole at $10,700. Why Max Scherzer over Clayton Kershaw? Yeah, if you look at just these two guys and base it on their matchup, you're going to favor Clayton Kershaw because he's facing the Giants, and the Giants don't have a lot of pop against anybody. But I think that's, a, that's definitely true against lefties as well. But the reason that I want to go with Max Scherzer is, is that the the difference is just $300. And the skill level in Scherzer is enough to justify swallowing the tougher matchup. Scherzer last year had a 35% strikeout rate for the full season. That's compared to 27% for Kershaw. That is an eight percentage point gap. And that is a major difference from a DFS expectation perspective. The Yankees active roster last year against righties, very good. They ranked fourth in WRC plus according to Fangrass. And that's good. But they do have a higher than average strikeout rate against righties as well, which gives Scherzer a path to a really good ceiling. My hope here, Greg, is that people avoid Max Scherzer because he's facing the Yankees. That is definitely a tough matchup, but it, we don't care about the floor in cash games we, or in tournaments. We care about the ceiling. And Scherzer, against a team that will strike out at home and being as good as he is, has a really good ceiling. So if you want to go for the safer route, maybe you want to go Kershaw there. But I'm going Cole in cash games. I think that it makes sense to emphasize ceiling, and I think that the ceiling for Scherzer is better than the ceiling for Kershaw. So to me, I think Scherzer is better straight up than Clayton Kershaw, and I think that he has the potential to be a little bit uh, less popular than Kershaw as well. To me, that says I want Scherzer as my number two guy behind Garrett Cole. I think the talent is too good to pass up, and I'm hoping people lower their interest in him due to the matchup because if they do, I'm going to gobble him up and and be pretty excited about him at lower popularity. I think that analysis is spot on here, Jim. Garrett Cole is the best, and there's a reason you want to put him in your cash game lineups. But when it comes to tournaments, 
most people I imagine are going to pivot to a little bit cheaper into Clayton Kershaw. If you believe Max Scherzer is better, well, that's one certainly check mark in his column. The other is what you mentioned with how much the Yankees do tend to strike out facing a, facing a strikeout pitcher in Max Scherzer, and especially because Scherzer got roughed up a little bit in a scrimmage last week. People may be down on Max Scherzer. He shouldn't be. In a tournament, he's a somehow sneaky play despite the price tag and despite the name. But with just four pitchers on the board, and of course we're ignoring San Francisco, Max Scherzer is going to be the sneakiest play out of Clayton Kershaw and Garrett Cole potentially the smartest, and that's how you're going to win the cash with that highest upside with Max Scherzer. A lot of hand motions today on the hurry up, but it's opening day. We're excited. So let's move on, Jim, to some of the hitters. We begin with the Dodgers, Max Muncy. He's $3,900 here on FanDuel, and Muncy, well, he had obviously a very good year last season. You think he gets off to a good start? Obviously, we are stacking with Dodgers in our lineup because, well, why would he want a hitter that's going after Garrett Cole or Clayton Kershaw or Max Scherzer? when you don't have to. So let's start with our first Dodger, and that is Max Muncy. Yeah, no disrespect to Johnny Cueto, because Johnny Cueto for a long time has been a very good pitcher. But I think when you're looking at the pitchers on this slate, it's pretty obvious that the team we're going to want to stack is the Dodgers. And the Dodgers have expensive studs in guys like Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts. And they could be expensive as a whole, but they also have some affordable pieces within their lineup. And one of them at the top end is definitely Max Muncy. And I think that Muncy, you know, is a good alternative if you can't get up to guys like Betts and Bellinger. Muncy, last year, a, a 267 isolated slugging percentage against right-handed pitching. That's a very good number, and he, he justified it with a 44% hard hit rate and a 41% fly ball rate. The strike rate for Muncy, not too bad either, just 24% against righties. I think that all those uh, things definitely check in the boxes there for sure. So he's $3,900. Even if you use coal, that's going to be affordable with some of the bats we're going to talk about later on. So I think that Muncy is affordable, a high upside piece, and in the lineup we want to stack for this slate. So I think that if I'm locking in just one Dodger, I think I'm going to start with Max Muncy because I think that I can make it work around him, and he's got the upside to justify it. So Muncy may be one of the first Dodgers I turn to, even if he's not quite as attractive as guys like Betts and Bellinger. Certainly the name value isn't there with Max Muncy compared to Cody Bellinger and Mookie Betts. And we told you we're stacking Dodgers. You would have thought that's exactly where we're starting. Garrett Cole is the must-have, which means Max Muncy should also be a must-have in your lineup. Very, very affordable, as are some other Dodgers. I, I don't think Muncy would be the first Dodger I lock in. We're going to get to him in just a second. But Muncy is certainly a viable option here on this opening day slate. The Dodger that I'm most excited about here, maybe even this season, Jim, it's Corey Seager. He's $3,200 on FanDuel, and he's healthy. We haven't seen Corey Seager healthy in a long time. And to start the season out uh, here in July without any health concerns with a normal offseason, you're going to get a guy that, well, just a couple of years ago was the best, one of the best young hitters in baseball. He's a really good price. It's the right matchup here against Johnny Cueto. I love Corey Seager. He's the first Dodger that I'm locking into my lineup. And I can't fault you that for, for a second, Greg, because he is super affordable at $3,200. And even though, like you said, he was coming off a, a big injury last year, even in that 2019 season, Seeger still was sneakily kind of good. He had a 42% hard hit rate against righties with a 40% fly ball rate. Those are, are numbers that can generate some upside in DFS for sure. And he did that while striking out just 15% of the time. When you put all that together, it says that he is a guy who could have a lot of single game upside. I think we could see that come to fruition this year, especially if he can take an extra step forward as he is a, another year, like you said, rem removed from all those injuries. The main question we could have with Seager is where he'll bat in the order once we get all those Dodgers studs funneled in there because Seager at times last year didn't bat super high in the order. Definitely a downside for DFS, but he did hit ahead of Jock Peterson on Tuesday in their scrimmage, which is a good sign, which I think means Seager's probably going to bat somewhere around fifth or sixth. And if he does so, that is absolutely acceptable in this lineup, in this matchup, and in this park as well. The talent is there, further removed from the injury, good spot in the lineup, and the exact team we want to stack. That's a lot of things to like about Corey Seager for $3,200. So if you want to put Seager above Muncy once you consider the salaries, I will not push back on that for a second because Corey Seager is just that good. The good news is the price is allowing you to put both Muncy and Corey Seager in your lineup in the right matchup here against Johnny Cueto. Uh, I imagine we're going to see Seager actually move up in the lineup as the season goes, but that's not going to help us, of course, for one day DFS play with the Dodgers and the Giants here on Thursday. Um, but Corey Seager, uh, all these metrics, as you mentioned, going the right direction. He's healthy here. If he can just bat high enough in the order, he gets more at-bats. 
well, he's going to be well worth it. We really like Corey Seager here on the hurry up, so get him in your lineup. One more Dodger to mention, you just talked about him, and that's Jock Peterson. Now, Jock Peterson, we didn't think it was going to be a, be a Dodger here in July, and yet he is, and he's going to be in the lineup, and he's also cheap. All of these combinations means he should be in your lineup as well on FanDuel. Yeah, I think we can say with a decent amount of certainty that Jock Peterson will be the most popular player on this Thursday slate, but a lot of times chalk is chalk for a reason, Greg, and that's the case with Jock Peterson on Thursday night because he's facing a righty, he is a value play, and Duke can do stupid things with a baseball bat because last year against righties, he had a 319 isolated slugging percentage, a 46% hard hit rate, and a 43% fly ball rate. you got to fan yourself off to read him that when you see his salary is $2,800, and also – his strikeout rate was a lot lower than you'd imagine at 21%. Now, Peterson, because a lot of things are maybe not where you'd want them to be, is probably going to bat a little bit lower in the order. I would expect him to bat at the highest sixth or so now that, that Mookie Betts is in town, but that's okay when it comes with as much upside as Jock Peterson brings and when we're stacking this team as we will be stacking the Dodgers on Thursday. There is a lot of upside for a low salary, so yeah, Jock Peterson's going to be popular. And I, again, I would if I had to bet, I would say he's probably going to be the most popular player on Thursday night slate, but again, I don't like Carroll that much. I think he's worth it. $2,800 in a fantastic matchup. I think that Jock is, uh, is definitely one of the best, or I would say the best value play on the slate and someone who uh, is just Justifiable, even though everyone else is going to use him too. There's this whole mantra that Jock Peterson kills righties. And it's, it's not a mantra. It's, it's just true. And Jock Peterson has to be in your lineup almost whenever he plays a right-handed, a right-handed pitcher. And especially when he is priced under $3,000 on fans, at least $2,800. It's chalk. Like you, you like to say, chalk for a reason. Because he's the right play. Corey Seager is a little bit sneakier. Max Muncy, Max Scherzer, a little bit sneakier. Jock Peterson, well, everyone's going to have him. And when he goes off, you need to have him as well. He's $2,800 on the FanDuel, so make sure he's in your lineup. One last player to mention, Jim, and it's, well, not a Dodger. All right. And he's also unbelievably cheap. If he's in the lineup at $2,100, well, you got to start Wilmer Flores. I feel like the reasoning is simply, well, he's starting, and he costs a minimum. That makes sense. It's also because he's facing a lefty. And Wilmer Flores, despite being only like 27 years old, has been like the most automatic guy against the lefty for it seems like a decade at this point. No matter what team he's played for, it seems like whenever, oh, hey, they're facing a lefty? Cool. Wilmer Flores it is. Especially when he's $2,100 and he could hit pretty high in this lineup because the Giants have a lot of lefties. And if they decide to factor in the platoon thing here with Clayton Kershaw, we could see Wilmer Flores potentially bat as high as like third. And at $2,100, Sign me up, baby, because last year a 279 isolated slugging percentage against left handed pitching and just an 11% strike rate. When you combine power with a low strikeout rate, that is a tremendous combination for DFS. And it's not just last year. As we know, Wilmer Flores has been doing this for a long time now, despite being not that old. If we look at just the past two calendar years, he has a 39% hard hit rate against left handed pitching. That's all good. Maybe it's a bit daunting to have him facing Clayton Kershaw, but I'd rather pick bats against Kershaw than against uh, Garrett Cole and Max Scherzer, for sure. And last year, Kershaw did allow a 41% hard hit rate to right-handed batters. So when they make contact, they can do some good things. So I think that Flores is palatable, for sure. Though, again, like Peterson, may wind up being popular because that salary will stand out so much. Again, I just think it's worth it. Wilmer Flores does bad things to lefties. He is cheap, probably going to bet pretty high in the order, and he has a softer matchup than a lot of guys on this slate. So Wilmer Flores, definitely someone we can turn to when trying to jam in guys like Garrett Cole and could potentially allow us to get back up to guys like Mookie Betts and Cody Bellinger for our hitters as well. Essentially, the mirror image of Jock Peterson would be Wilmer Flores, killing lefties, not so great against righties versus Jock Peterson. He destroys righties. Not so much even playing against lefties. But the even better part about Wilmer Flores, just $2,100. And you can see him that even third in the lineup. He killed lefties forever since he was crying on the field with the New York Mets all the way to Arizona. And of course now with San Francisco, Wilmer Flores, a guy I really liked last year. And I really like here on opening day, especially with the price being at $2,100. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. We appreciate the time. Happy opening day. I'm ready, man.
I've been ready, Greg. It's been, it's been a long wait for this day to finally get here. It seemed a lot of times like we may not get here, but hey, it's here. Let's enjoy it. Let's have a full slate Friday too. I am ready for some, for some sports to be back. I appreciate it. And I'll be talking to you a couple of times next week too. So that's even more reason to be excited. That's right. Twice a week, you and I next week here, Jim. Five days a week is what the hurry up returns to starting next week. We have a whole lot of sports to talk about. And I can't wait. Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Enjoy opening day. And stay safe, everybody.